had one of those binders where um, you keep baseball cards, and I had probably a dozen and a half credit cards in each of these pages. And you just, you max one out, you go to the next one. You max one out, you go to the next one. I don't totally recommend this as a way to fund your company, but for us, that was our answer to all the rejection that we had received. There's a design conference coming to San Francisco, and there's not a single place to stay in the city. And I'm looking around the apartment, seeing all the space in our living room, thinking, wait, there's all this extra space. What if we took an air bed out of the closet, we blew it up on the floor, and we hosted guests who needed a place to stay? I call up Brian and said, Brian, we're gonna throw air beds on the floor, and we're gonna host guests this weekend. We launched just in time for South by Southwest, and we had about 10 people list their place in Austin, and a total of two reservations, one of which was Brian. <laughs> so um, we were not met with success. It did not take off like a rocket ship. Um, in fact, um, I would call it a miserable failure at that point. Well, we actually had 20 introductions to investors throughout Silicon Valley. 10 of those people replied to our email. Five of them met us for coffee. Zero invested in Airbnb. And Talk about a tough time. You've got some of the smartest people in the world. You know, they've, they've picked some of the, the most well-known companies that we all love and use today, from Googles and PayPals and YouTubes. And here they are telling us that our idea is crazy, that it's not gonna scale, that people aren't gonna stay in people's homes around the world. Kind of the world thought we were crazy. It was late one night in the kitchen. Brian and I are trying to keep our spirits up and we're brainstorming crazy ideas like, what if we provided breakfast to go along with the airbeds of airbed and breakfast? It's the middle and the height of the political conventions and, and uh, campaigns. So we thought, well, let's make them politically themed. We'll call one Obama O's the breakfast of change. We'll call the other Cat McCain's Maverick in Every Bite. One thing led to the other. We ended up making cereal boxes and selling them online for $40 a box. We ended up making $20,000 on breakfast cereal. So. Little known fact, the Obamas not only got us to zero, like that's something to be proud of, we got it to zero, but we then got introduced to Paul Graham. Phone rings, it's Paul Graham. He's calling to tell us that we've been accepted to Y Combinator. And so what we later found out is that the reason that Paul let us in wasn't because he thought our idea was amazing. He actually thought it was kind of weird. He let us in because he saw that with the breakfast cereal, we could figure out how to do anything. And that's how we got into Y Combinator. It's our very first office hours with Paul Graham. He's looking at Brian, Nate, and I, and he goes, so where's your market? And we kind of look at each other and we're like thinking to ourselves, we don't really have a market. No one's using our service. But there are some people in New York who are renting out their homes. And Paul goes, so your customers are in New York City and you're here in Mountain View. Go to New York City. We pull up the 20 hosts and search results and we realize something, that the photography, the images of their listings are actually not very good. So we kind of have this realization, you know, we can solve that problem. We know how to take a good photo, but it's not scalable. That's the thing, is that up until this point, we had tried to solve problems in a scalable way, which I think I would call like some of the mythology of Silicon Valley, is that you have to solve problems in a scalable way. That one line of code has to meet the needs of hundreds, tens, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people. So Paul Graham comes along and basically gives us this message, which was the single greatest piece of advice we ever got. Go meet your people. Do things that don't scale. It'll teach you. You'll learn from it. So we fly to New York that weekend. We rent a camera with a wide angle lens, and we go from door to door throughout Manhattan and Brooklyn. So here we are in the environment of our customers, now watching them use our product in real time. And we're seeing a lot of things that we didn't know were problems. We got so close that we got to step into their shoes for a moment and see the world through their eyes and really see the pain points that they were feeling. And that to me is like, that's the basics of, of innovation. You take a, uh, an enlightened, empathetic point of view for your customers, you combine it with your own unique point of view of the world to create something new. And you know what happened because of this? They started using the word love in the same sentence as Airbnb. 
They started telling their neighbors, their friends, their family members, their coworkers. And so two things started to happen simultaneously. The amount of choice started to go up and the quality of that choice went up as well. And when a new host came to the site, they said, oh, well, I guess I need to have really nice photos to be in the part of this marketplace. And we started to see the number of reservations go up. I remember the first time I saw a treehouse in Airbnb. It was in Vermont. And this treehouse uh, was built by parents for their kids many years ago. Their kids go off to college and they're thinking, well, let's just take this treehouse down because it's, it's taking up space in our backyard. And the kids are like, no, no, no. There's this new website called Airbnb. Why don't you list it and rent it out to people who want to come to Vermont to see the leaves change color in the fall? They put it on Airbnb and before they know it, they have people from around the world coming to their treehouse. Over the course of a couple months, they start to realize they're making enough money to actually pay their mortgage <laughs> for their real house. So there's now a six month wait list for the treehouse. What's amazing is you, when you create a platform to see what your community does with it. And our community has proven that they're very creative. Where Airbnb is headed is directly related to where it all started. We hosted our guests and got to provide hospitality to them, right? We got to care for them. The second thing that happened is they got to belong in San Francisco. None of them had really ever visited the city before, but because of our suggestions and recommendations, they got to go from feeling like outsiders to feeling like insiders. And the third thing that happened is we became economically empowered. We were able to make enough money to make ends meet and save our apartment. And those three principles are exactly what scale today, hospitality, belonging, and economic empowerment. For any entrepreneur out there, like you can't take no for an answer. You know, we had really smart, credible people telling us no. And had we listened to them, there, there might not be Airbnb today. Thank you. Right. That is some entrepreneurial Action. spirit. Action. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much.